today, discerning the signs of the times, we find ourselves in the midst of our people in search of a new identity, an identity that encompasses desirable traditional values and worthy modern practices which have relevance to the felt needs and aspirations of emerging Bougainville society. Reading the signs of the times by subjecting the problems and their symptoms to structural analysis, we believe we have identified the root causes of the hardships and influences which are impeding the proper development of our people and our country. At this time, our people are going through some of the most difficult times in our history. Whilst some of the problems are due to natural causes, most are man-made and only have ourselves to blame. Despite the circumstances which may not seem to be conducive to a healthy socio-economic and political development, we as a people of faith must rise above the seeming sense of hopelessness and instill hope and confidence in our people. Our vision of our future must be given flesh by the way we think and live. In, in other words, we live our potentiality as if it is real and actual. And this realization and appreciation of our potential to actualize our dream gives meaning to our human endeavor. The Bougainville Peace Agreement is the embodiment of the kind of vision of the kind of society we want to create for ourselves. We stand at the threshold of a new political regime, the basis of the new socio-economic order. This agreement is not just another agreement, rather it is a new covenant washed in the blood of so many of our people of both sides of the conflict, about 15 to 20,000 who died during the crisis. Rather, it is a contract that offers a new promise, a new hope to our people who have been structurally and attitudinally marginalized and disempowered. We have been victimized by existing power structures that sacrifice human dignity and human participation in the interest of economic rationalism, that is, interests and benefits of the few, and for the highly centralized and bureaucratized government. The new Bougainville Peace Agreement offers a new paradigm shift that structurally and institutionally liberates and empowers our people from the syndrome of dependency and powerlessness. Today we celebrate the dawn of a new era, an era that offers new opportunities, new challenges, a new potential that must be actualized for the common good. This new contract has been painstakingly negotiated and agreed between the people of Bougainville and the government of Papua New Guinea, and it is a commitment to enable the people of Bougainville to manage their own affairs and determine their own destiny and make their own mark in human history. Today we embark on a new revolution, a revolution with a difference, a revolution of peace, justice, human rights, and integral human development. In this revolution, we are called upon to stand up and make a difference in the world, to reject violence, greed, and ignorance, and to espouse peace and human dignity and 
democracy. The new political regime rejects the concept of unity in uniformity. It promotes unity in diversity in accordance with the principle of subsidiarity, which stipulates that the central government must not usurp the role and responsibilities of the autonomous government and provincial governments. It makes the people of Bougainville active stakeholders with the national government as a partner in the all important national enterprise of nation building and sovereignty. The parties that negotiated the peace agreement, a typically Melanesian strategy of reaching decisions through means of consultation and consensus. In this way, new positions, different from the original positions of the adversaries, were developed through fermentation of concepts and ideas. Hence, the co-creation we have in the comprehensive political agreement on referendum, arms disposal, and autonomy. As we celebrate the formal signing of the New Deal, we ought to thank different peoples and organizations for their contributions. On behalf of the people of Bougainville, I, as the governor, wish to formally thank the government of Papua New Guinea, Morauta Ogio government, and the members of parliament and the opposition led by Mr. Bill Skate for their resilience and support in our endeavor to create a new deal for our people. I wish also to thank the country and the governments of Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, and last but not the least, to thank the United Nations as represented here today by Ambassador Noel Sinclair. I also wish to take this opportunity to thank the churches for their support, both spiritual and moral support, to thank the chiefs, women, ex-combatants, and the people of Bougainville and Papua New Guinea for their tremendous support towards the successful achievement of this historic document. After the signing, we will then embark on an intensive conscientization program to inculcate Christian and democratic principles and values. Instead of resorting to violence, we must resort to democratic means to resolve our differences and our conflicts. We must have policies and strategies to create an egalitarian society in which every man, woman, and child child's needs will be met. The success of this epoch-making deal will depend on the partnership and mutual cooperation of the national government and the people of Bougainville. Finally, let me take this opportunity to thank and praise God, our Creator, who in his wisdom and discretion opted to invite us to be his co-creators charged with the task to bring justice and new creation to our world.